Hey guys, welcome back to Rowan's Math Club. Today we'll be learning about proportions. So what exactly is a proportion? Well, a proportion is an equation that says that two ratios or two fractions are equal to one another. Now, what exactly is a ratio? Well, from our previous videos, we know that ratios are just a comparison between two numbers. And ratios can be written in three different ways. So let's go ahead and review ratios before we move into today's topic. So ratios can be written in three different ways. So let's choose a ratio. Let's choose two different numbers. Let's say the ratio is 3 to 4. So we can write this three different ways. The first way is through colons. So we can write this as 3 colon 4. The next way is writing it as 3 2 4. And the last way is through a fraction. So we can write this as 3 over 4 or 3 fourths. All of these can be read as 3 to 4. So this is 3 to 4, this is 3 to 4, and this is 3 to 4. But of course, in fractions, we can also say as this is 3 fourths. So this is a review of ratios. So as we said, proportions say that two ratios are equal to one another. So how do we set up proportions? Well, let's go ahead and choose two ratios, and then I'll show you guys how to do that. So let's keep this first ratio as it is. So let's say that we have the two ratios 3 to 4 and we have 6 to 8. So these ratios are equal to another because when we're setting up a proportion, the ratios have to be equal. Now how can we write this as a proportion? Well, there are different ways we can do this. The first way is if we keep it in the same colon form, we can write this as 3 to 4. And then to show that they are equal, we're not going to put an equal sign, but instead we're going to put two pairs of colons. So we're going to put so here's colon and then here. So we have kind of like four dots forming a square. And then we have 6 colon 8. This tells us that 3 to 4 is equal to 6 to 8. Now, how exactly can we be sure that this is true? Well, we can do that by multiplying the numbers that are on the outside by each other and then the numbers that are on the, that are on the inside by each other. So the outside numbers are 3 and 8. So they are on the outer side, I guess, okay? So 3 times 8, and then multiply the inner numbers, so which are 4 and 6 together. So we know that 4 times 6, right here, 4 times 6 is 24, and 3 times 8 is also 24. And since, since these products are the same, we know that our proportion is true. 3, four, three to 4 is equal to 6 to 8. Now this was one way of writing this proportion. Another way we can set up this proportion is through the fraction form. So we can write this as 3 fourths, and in this time we will use an equal sign, so 3 fourths is equal to 6 eighths. Now, in order to be um, sure that they are, uh, this proportion is true, th in this method there's actually two different ways we can uh, make sure of that. The first way is just asking yourselves, what times 3 gives you 6 and what times 4 gives you 8? We know that 3 times 2 gives us 6 and then 4 times 2 gives us 8. Since this number is the same, this proportion is true. The other way is doing cross multiplication. So if we multiply 3 by 8 and 6 by 4, we should be able to get the same product. Well, as we did over here, 3 times 8 is 24 and 4 times 6 is 24. So therefore, this proportion is true. Now let's go ahead and set up another proportion with one unknown value. So we'll be able to find the value, an unknown value, right? Okay, so this time let's say we have the first ratio is 6 to 12. And the next one is 12 to x. So we don't know the value of x. It's a variable, right? So we have to find the value of x, and we can do so by setting up a proportion. So remember, there's different ways we can set up this proportion, and I'll, we'll go through each of them. So the first way is if we do it in fraction form. Actually, let's do it in the colon form first. So we have 6 to 12. And remember, put four dots, kind of forming a square shape. And then we have 12 to x. The first way is to multiply the outer numbers and then the inner numbers and find the um, answer. So if we multiply 6 by x, we get 6x, and if we multiply 12 by 12, we get 144. So 6x is equal to 144. 
All right, now, in order to solve for the value of x, we're gonna have to get rid of the six. We're gonna have to use inverse operations because since six is being multiplied to x, we have to divide by six to get r to eliminate the six, therefore x is um, by itself. Now remember, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side, so divide this side by x as well. So we get x is equal to 144 divided by six, which is 24. So x is equal to 24. And so our value of x is 24. Now we can plug that in and see whether that is true once again. So we put it over here, six to 12. And then we have 12 to 24. If we multiply these, we should be able to get the same product. We know that six times 24 We get four, carry the two, we get 144, and 12 times 12 is 144. So therefore, 144 is of course equal to 144. Therefore, this proportion is correct, and the value of x is 24. Now this was the first way. The next way we can set up this proportion to find the value of x is through fractions. So let's set up this frac in fraction form. So we have six over 12 is equal to 12 over x. All right, let's do cross multiplication. So if we cross multiply, we have to multiply six by x and 12 by 12. Six times x is six x is equal to 12 times 12, which is 144. Divide by six to do in inverse operation of multiplication. That six cancels out. We are left with x is equal to 144 divided by six, which is 24. Therefore, our value of x is of course the same. Now remember, in this method, there are two ways we can find the value of x. The second way is if we just ask ourselves, what times 6 gives us tw uh, 12? We know that 6 times 2 gives us 12. So if we multiply 12 by 2 as well for the denominator, we'll get 24. So x is equal to 24. So as you can see, when you use proportions, it gives you a variety of ways to find an unknown value. That's why it's always helpful to set up a proportion in math. So that's all I have for this video, and I hope you guys learned uh, about proportions. And once again, if, as we go on further into this chapter, we'll learn more about proportions in greater detail. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!